Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right hand corner, we have Potato Nut, aka Hazley Nut, starting as the White Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have Gretorp, starting as the Blue Protoss. This is going to be on Eclipse. So, game one, we saw Gretorp pulling out kind of that old school, you can just see experienced, the experienced Protoss antics, just harassing Hazley Nut almost relentlessly. I like this bone, I'm just noticing it now along the gas line. That seems appropriate, right? Where it's like, you got the bone here, that's what led to the Vespin gas eventually. Vespin gas perhaps just being these animal, like, remains that go into the core of the Earth. Anyway, game one, handily going to Gretorp. It just seemed like he had firm control from top to bottom, despite new meta shifts. Looks like he is... I'm not sure how much he practiced for this match, uh, either. He is definitely coming back to the scene. Back in the day, he was kind of a B ish B plus player. I think... I'm not sure if he snuck into A at any point in time. He's dropped a pylon near his front door, is moving out with his initial probe to perhaps... Here's the thing on two-player maps, oftentimes you do want to open up with a 9-pool, 12-pool, something along those lines, just because that early probe press can be a lot. But wanted to give the shout-outs to Hazley Nut and Grotorp. Both of them check out both of their channels. I think it's Grotorp TV on Twitch as well. We are seeing an overpool at this stage, so Overlord first, pool on 9. And the probe managing to sneak up and spot it. But I don't... This is one of those things. It's usually one of those situations where I'm like, man, if I'll put it this way. If either one of these players was in a match against any other individual, usually I would be rooting for them. Secretly in my heart, trying to remain unbiased, but secretly. But between having both of them out here, I definitely feel like I don't have a, a dog in the fight. Just because they are both amazing people. And I highly, highly, highly recommend you go follow and support them on their streams. Hazley Nut, in particular, I think is a great resource. How do I put this? I, I feel like there's often times where you have guys like, um, looks like Hazley Nut going to go ahead and take that 12 o'clock base since that probe was there to harass that natural expansion. Gretorp sneaking back in. There are two Zergans being produced. He has opened Forge first and is sneaking the Nexus behind it upon seeing kind of a, a lack of eggs and a lack of Zerglings being produced. That just shows you again experience. But anyway... <clears throat> I highly recommend supporting them. They're just amazing people. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like they've just been around forever and have just contributed an immense amount to the scene. Hazley Nut is someone she's really studying the game. And I feel like she's also is providing a great bridge where you have high level players like Nyok and like Artosis and they don't even know what to articulate, I think, to the lower level players because they're just so high up there and have been playing for such a long period of time. Hazley is closer to the floor. So a lot of the things she says and a lot of the experiences she has, uh, I think can contribute to learning StarCraft overall. And she's just been monumental in the CPL community is an absolute terror in that group. Cannon is up to deal with the Zerglings that were initially along the way. A gateway, kind of an interesting configuration as far as a front door. So a gateway not on the front, but kind of at a staggered position, almost trying to invite a Zergling run by. Nexus is warping in momentarily. There is a third base going up for Hazley. I'm wondering if she's going to go for the Hydralisk bust this time around, or if she's going to go for, again, three hatch spire. It almost feels like three hatch play has has kind of resurged. And I think with Zergling speed, with this cannon configuration, if they approach from the left, they might be able to do run by to at least get a scout. Not 100% positive on that one. Anyway, third hatchery, sorry, second hatchery up. There are drones making their way that direction. Lair is already mutating, which suggests we're going to see three hatch layer rather than, or three hatch muta rather than any sort of hydro's play. Cybernetics core planted on the front to provide some extra padding on this front door. I'm wondering if Gretarp's just not used to this map because this is a very odd configuration with kind of a lot of odd, this is just weird. Yeah, that's all I know what to say. That's all I can say about that. I've, this is the first time I've ever seen this configuration on a Protoss front door, and I'm wondering if it's intentional to invite something or if it's just lack of experience. Probes running right by the Zerglings. Three Zerglings splitting off. One Zergling going to remain on the front to just try to keep an eye on things. There is a Zealot on the front, and I'm wondering if, that, if these two Zerglings are going to be able to go ahead and blockade this ramp. They're going to be well worth it. Overlord getting a little bit too far in. Going to take some cannon damage as a result. The probe making its way and critically wants to see if there's that Vespin Geyser up. There are Zerglings planted on the front, but is the Vespin Geyser there? No, no second Vespin Geyser yet for Hazley Nut, which leads me to believe she's not going to have quite the gas she's going to want <clears throat> to really make this Mutalisk attack stick. 
but we will see. She's currently harvesting a lot of gas, or at least she's only going to dedicate to perhaps just the five initial mulisk and perhaps go back to that four hatchery play. I think Red Torp, upon seeing that drone moving the way across, realizes that third hatchery is to the north. Second assimilator is plopping down for Red Torp. He's got a gateway and a stargate warping in. Hazley is going to see it. That overlord very likely going to get taken out, but here the question is, is on timing. We are seeing, yeah, close to, so maybe she will be able to pull this off with one gas. I'm trying to remember this, the three hatch build order. I thought a second assimilator was called for. We are seeing a pushback to four hatch play. So Spire, I assume what this is going to be is a Spire. We'll see if she can save the resources to go ahead and get those initial five mulisks off and more or less provide a threat to Gretorp. First Corsair is being built right now. Still no cannons on that back line. There's also no cannon. There is kind of a cannon that's pseudo protecting, but not in range to protect that probe line, mostly to protect that gateway. So it'll Ladoon warping in as well. So initial Corsair needs to make its way to the base, kind of see what's up. We do see, well, actually I take it back. So Spire is up. I was waiting to see the Mutalisks. It looks like that Hydrosten's being plopped instead. So no Mutalisks, additional hatchery. So a shift back to, it looks like five hat, so five hatch Hydrolisk. And I'm wondering if that's because that initial overlord got killed here in the base by that Corsair uh, to create that supply cap. Instead, some Scourge being built. This is kind of an, usually you'll see it with just with four hatch, but this is kind of the, the safe turnaround evolution chamber going down as well. That's unfortunate. I think there was an opportunity there for Hazelina to get the Mutalisks out in the air, but again, I think because of that Overlord kill, might have capped that. Might be able to get that second Overlord, but two sets of Scourge are making their way across. I don't know that they're going to catch this. So this initial Corsair... Oh, no! Don't stop, Scourge! There you go. One down, second... Oh, come on! Go, Scourge! Go! And now six Mutalisks in production. So Hazley actually might be able to turn this around into a decent harass with the Scourge combo delay, because now Gretorp trying to take his nine o'clock. Still no cannon. Okay, so warping a cannon towards his main. No cannon really protecting the probe line at the natural expansion. And so the Mutalisks with this tech switch might be able to get some damage done, especially with the Scourge support. And I'm looking for it. There are a lot of Zealots. This is level one weapons here. Their And Zealot leg speed is coming online. Now, here's the thing. There's a small window where this can happen. The Zealots are going to run across. With a decent SimCity, she might be able to defend just with these creep colonies as the Zealots make their way across. It's also possible that she might want to just move back with these Mulisks and engage those Zealots to try to protect her economy. Right, but needs to make a move on. There's the Scourge to provide some support. The Zergling managed to sneak their way to the 9 o'clock. That's going to draw them off. And now the probes getting harassed. There are three Corsair here. Let's see if the Scourge have an opportunity to land. Yeah, the Scourge threatening those Corsairs. Going to keep pushing them back. Hazley having a little bit of trouble doing the double micromanagement here to get as much damage as she really wants to. Still getting a lot of a lot of probe kills. Gretorp doing a fantastic job of just keeping these Corsairs on the corner back towards that cannon line. Probe still getting annihilated over the north, but now those Zealots moving out. They want to go ahead and engage at the 12 o'clock location. Second Sun Colony on the way. I don't know if they're going to be in time. The Corsair is moving out to chase down these Mutalisks as they're looking to re-engage and provide some defense. Not while tight with that Evolution Chamber on that corner. No Zerglings to support, and the Zealots with that level 1 weapons very rapidly able to take out one Creep Colony. This drone's able to get so a nice drone drill, to, drone drill to disrupt them otherwise. So Hazley should be able to defend this without too much trouble. But are the Corsairs going to be able... It looks like they were able to get an additional Overlord kill. So only losing, it looks like... I don't even know that she lost a drone here to the north. So nice defense. But Gretorp has managed to take his 9 o'clock base. Hazley hasn't managed to take her fourth. She is supply capped right here with that Overlord hit. Is working on a Phenomenized Carapace just to deal with potential... Dark Templar that could be out in the field. No Dark Templar tech here, though. A third gate, or, or take it back. Two Dark Templar making their way across. Where's the Templar archives? I missed it here. Mutalisk is diving in with large enough numbers to disrupt this 9 o'clock base. The Corsair is making their way to try to engage this. The Scourge are there. There are no protective cannons. One Corsair down. Two Corsair thought that was going to get attacked, uh, taken out, but damaged. So Gretorp having to back off, moving out with another set of Zealots to go to the 12 o'clock base. Also, potential Dark Templar are going to be joining them on delay. There are Overlords in position. The Mulus backing off now to try to re-engage. There's no creep colonies this time, so it's just going to be defensive units. And unfortunately, that, that egg might have been able to block that corner. But it's just going to be drones versus zealots, which is going to end up being a lot of drones kills. The Dark Templar re-pivoting to that natural expansion. 
to disrupt Hazley on multiple fronts. And Gretorp doing it again, providing a lot of distraction. Looks like these Dark Temple are easily going to get taken care of that natural expansion. The Mules are going to be able to clean up those zealots to the 12 o'clock base. And Hazley with another nice defense. But critically, she's not taking additional bases. She's not really pushing up the tech, and Gretorp is establishing that 9 o'clock base once again. He has probes uh, there, just needs to get them mining, so making a good game of it. Zealot, two Zealots still on the ground, Hylos engaging right there. Spines upgrading, range upgrading for the Mutalists as far as a tech switch, and Hazley also droning behind this, wondering if she's going to be able to establish a fourth base Sometimes she does have map control at this stage. More cannons being plopped down. The Corsairs there trying to provide defense in the 9 o'clock position. There is a cannon uh, right there to provide some additional defense. An Archon morphing in also to provide some defense with some that anti-air. The Mutalisks not completely neutralized, but their work is going to be a lot harder unless they're catching High Templar, etc. in open field. Mutalisks engaging the Corsairs right there. Hazley immediately backing off upon seeing all of that defense. So now Hazley, realizing she has map control, going to go ahead and grab that fourth base. Is starting to pour on the pressure economically, grabbing a bunch of additional mutalisks, or sorry, hydalisks and mutalisks. Has lurker tech on the way. A single Dark Templar in midfield without overlords, uh, and she's actually upgrading Ventral Sacks, so looking perhaps to get a drop somewhere in the meantime. The Dark Templar is going to be able to sneak into this upper left-hand corner. It doesn't look like Hazley spotted it. No, she did spot it. Overlord moving position. Over that hatchery, and it looks like some some mutalisks going to go ahead and try to chase that one down. Also checking additional expansions just to make sure that Gretorp didn't sneak something. Gretorp now with a bunch of High Templar with all sorts of energy. A couple of Corsairs and Archon. Level 1 weapons is there. Level 2 weapons is about halfway on the way. Has three gateways. It looks like a fourth gateway being plopped down. But I got to give the edge to Hazley right here. If she can just keep the macro up, maybe get a Lurker contained, maybe establish additional bases. That Dark Templar just going to... Hold position here in that upper left-hand corner. If she can, yeah, drone up, get that economy rolling, move her way towards Hive Tech, uh, and just keep doing what she's doing. Should be able to sneak a game away from Gretorp, who honestly was uh, my favorite going into this match. Six gateways inside the main. We see several pylons warping in underneath to provide that supply. Level one, level two weapons. I don't think it's going to be online as it's pushing across. Hazley is grabbing that Queen's Nest right as Gretorp is moving this army out. I'm wondering if he's going to go for an attack on the main or something along those lines. The Hydralisks are engaging there, getting some free hits, but there's a little bit of a whiff of a side storm. Managed to get a nice dodge there by Hazley, not walking straight through it. Was able to pull out. The High Templar need to be careful because the Mutalisks might be able to snipe them in position. A couple additional hatcheries going down at the 1 o'clock base. Or sorry, the 11 o'clock base. Mulus regathering, though, along the south. Gretorp finding a window. He might be able to take out that hatchery before Hazley's able to respond. Additional creep colonies plopping down. I don't know if it's going to be enough. I think she now realizes where that army's position is trying to cycle back around. Does have level 1 missile attack. But level 2 weapons is now certainly going to be online before this, in this attack is in full engagement. Now that army revealing itself to the north. The Hydalists trying to engage. Are the Mulus going to... Uh, no, the Mulus are engaging on top of the Archon. Some good side storms underneath as well. And the Mutalus is using a lot of side storm as well. So not able to get on top of the High Templar. The High Templar dropping a lot of storm. A, a decent amount of damage right there. A bunch of Zealots just running past this entire army. Looking to engage. They are going to be able to take down that main hatchery. Are they going to get cleaned up by what's left? Gretorp also trying to sneak this 9 o'clock base. Hydalus were there to take it down. But it looks like the Zealots going to swing around to engage them. Hazley moving her way. Oh, these... Poor Hydalisks on move command going to get wiped out. She is going to be able to save additional hatcheries. And go ahead and plop another hatchery to, to grab that base. The Zealots need to pull back in a defensive formation. But not able to stop Gretorp from taking another expansion. Not able to stop Gretorp's oof, sizable air army starting to move out. Well, level 1 air weapons is being upgraded to try to slow that down. Hive tech is on the way. But the question is, is will Hazley have a sufficient ground army to keep up because Gretorp suddenly keeping up with his macro is 30 supply ahead has a significant Corsair force which is doing all sorts of damage that last engagement ugh, it felt like Hazley had all the pieces right there but just just didn't quite wasn't quite able to execute and pull it out some zealots moving the way around I don't see a lot of lurker I do see lurkers here but they are not burrowed with the Corsair positioning I'm wondering if he's going to attack the 12 o'clock 
or 11 o'clock base here. Hatchery reestablishing itself. There are lurkers there. Critical thing for Hazley and is she's also not mining this gas just yet. As Gretorp has just been consistently harassing that location. The Zealots wandering their way around looking for a soft spot. Poor drone is going to... Did attack there, so give the drone some uh, props. Upon certain death, spat in the face of the enemy there. Observers there to snipe or potentially take out that Corsair force. There are High Templar with plenty of energy. The Corsair is nicely moving away from those Scourge to the north. Hydalisks regrouping. They're just oof, donating their lives, unfortunately, with that reinforcement point there. And Gritorp basically just kind of forcibly providing some ma map control. Nice side storm dodge, leading some zealots into it. Unfortunately, this isn't a large enough attack force really to diesel. This is kind of piecemeal, and as a result, it's going to get wiped out. That Archon trying to morph in, and it looks like it's just going to be able to do so. I'm looking for that Adrenal Upgrade. Adrenal Upgrade is, in fact, being upgraded. That's a big swing in momentum. Hazelina has all the pieces. Unfortunately for her, it's just the macro that's lacking at this stage of things. She's sitting a ton of supply behind Gretorp. Gretorp has a lot of bases that are mining. She still isn't really saturated. At the 11 o'clock base. And if she can just sit back and perhaps macro and continue with this tech, might be able to find something. Hydralis is moving into the 9 o'clock base. Are the Zelts going to be in position to respond or are they just going to counterattack? They're starting to move their way up. It looks like they might go for an attack at the main. The Hydralis is pouring in. They might be able to take out this base. But the Zelts just marching in. There is one lurker unburrowed. There's two lurkers on the ramp and a. Spore Colony actually blockading. That actually is easily going to get cleaned up. The Hydalists did manage to take out that Nexus in the interim. They're going to donate their lives for the effort, though. Painting their blood at this expansion, but it is the blood of victory as they were able to take out that Nexus. Some Creep Colonies defensively being planted at the natural expansion. The Zealots and Archon looking for a situation where they can get some damage done and keep Hazley back. Hazley now saturating that twelve, that uh, sorry, 11 o'clock base. Defiler Mound is up. Nidus Canal also in production. And Adrenal Upgraded Zerglings. Plague. Dark Swarm. Dark Swarm very rapidly can take these expansions out. And make these Dragoons just fodder. And Zerglings do pretty well against Zealots once they have that Adrenal Upgrade. Particularly when they can get some of these uh, melee weapon, melee attack upgrades. Which is what we're seeing. Hazley trying to expand to the bottom right hand. Just take everything. Doing so with... Being behind in supply overall. A couple Zerglings managing to sneak through somehow. All the way end around. While these cannons are not in position. It might be able to yeah, do a lot of disruption here. It looks like that's not going to provoke Gretort to, to pull back. He's trying to sneak an expansion in the upper left hand corner. While all of that is happening. So both players kind of sitting back and macroing up. I do believe this is going to play in Hazley's favor. If she can just yeah find the space to macro. She does have the double, the double evolution chambers up. She is defiler. She's got the tech to make it happen. But is still about 30 supply down. And really hasn't had an answer for this air force of Gretorps that's been out. Does have level 1 weapons. It's just hunting overlords. The Scourge looking to engage. Oh, they're scattering a little bit. And are they going to be able... Uh, Dragoons are going to be able to go there and clean the, the rest of the Scourge up. Unfortunately for Hazley. So it has additional bases. They're not quite producing yet. This army's just been sitting here in the meantime. Hazley is macroing up towards 200-200. But here's the other critical thing. Gretorp has shown that his old school late game army management is just still there. And Hazley has shown some difficulty in keeping her armies cohesive and engaged and really picking off the units she needs to pick off in these large engagements. So as we're seeing two mostly equivalent armies grouping up, will she have the micromanagement skills to really pick off these High Templar, to get the swarms down, to get the plagues down, to do all the things she really wants to do? A bunch of Zerglings gathering up around these Corsair to the 6 o'clock location. It looks like Lurkers have managed to find this exposed upper left-hand base, but Gretorp gathering up with his entire army looking to just full-on engage over this natural expansion. Swarm being dropped down, and that's going to back up. This is mostly a Dragoon Force, so that's going to be a nice defensive play right there, just backing all of the rest of that out, and Hazley getting a win by taking this Nexus out in the upper left-hand corner. Gritorp still, I, perhaps in a bit of a quandary. He's got level 3 weapons. He's got a large army. He needs to start taking Hazley down before she gets too powerful. 
but is having trouble finding location to do so. A bit of an empty storm, only catching a single unit there. The Observer moving in, getting taken out almost immediately by that creep colony. The Zerglings trying to sneak in from underneath, but with a sizable enough army and no swarm to protect, it looks like they're not able to quite get there. So Gretorp, uh, kind of a bit of a detente. Neither player able to get anything accomplished there. Hazley Nut with the supply lead. Zerglings pressing in midfield. Gretorp has a lot of energy, but he's saving these size storms for a larger bulk grouping. Some Zerglings flooding in. They're going to catch a couple Dragoons from the south. Looks like those Corsair have managed, uh, either were taken out or have backed off. At the 6 o'clock location in the interim, Hazley sticking, still staying around 200 supply. The Observer... And those Dragoons making short work of those Lurkers. But piecemeal forces moving their way around. Hazley's moving into full Sauron style. And these Zerglings are extremely deadly. Even in small numbers. With that Adrenal upgrade. Moving back across some Lurkers making their way down. Here's the thing. yeah, Hazley has the, has the supply to get it done. Has the upgrades to get it done. But you can just see it's still, uh, rather than a full grouped attack, still a bit of a piecemeal attack that's coming in one at a time. Gretor trying to respond by just producing a glut of Dark Templars. He knows he's had this Corsair army up for a very long period of time. Plus that weapons one is going to try to accomplish it that way. Both players near maxed out. And Hazley, let's see, I hope she's got Plague upgraded, because Plague can neutralize that either direction. Dark Templar, and I'm not sure if she realizes these Dark Templar are her. Dark Templar sneaking into the 6 o'clock location, picking off Zerglings. Does Hazley realize it? I'm not sure. Some Dragoons also trying to engage from the north. Nice distractionary attack. Some Zerglings flooding in with the Lurkers to engage right there, but the Dark Templar just wreaking havoc. At the 6 o'clock base, they're certainly going to be able to take out this base before Hazley is able to respond. However, the Dragoons are going to be cleaned up to the north. And it looks like Hazley also going to engage with some Zerglings across the Dragoons to clean up that attack force out. However, Gretorp getting the better part of it. Looks like the turnaround macro has been in his favor. Because he is once again near 200 supply and Hazley Nut is still 50 supply down. Dark Templar, after clearing out everything, are going to move right into this additional base from Hazley. And so Hazley losing a lot of her, for her forward expansions were, were really providing a lot of def defense. Zerglings moving in, but Zerglings versus Dark Templar is not a great combo, particularly when there's no detection overhead, which is unfortunate. And still having trouble cleaning up that last Dragoon. So losing two expansions in that counterattack, plus behind supply overall, walking some lurkers, actually just heads up walk, walking some lurkers into Gretor's army in the middle of the map. And Grotarp taking a big momentum swing. Hazley trying to take a base in the upper left-hand corner. Looks like some of these... Honestly, these Dark Templar could turn around and fight if they wanted to. It looks like instead they're just going to take some hold position damage from those Mutalisks. Some Lurkers moving forward to go ahead and clear this army out. Drones in transition. Looks like they're going to get wiped out as well. Some Psystorm attacking these units as they're trying to position and just getting blanketed in Psystorm, honestly, before they even burrowing. So that's leaving them very, very weak, but there's no Observer here. There is a Dark Templar moving in position. They're getting wiped out. So at least this hold attack force that was holding position here in the middle of this uh, grouping getting wiped out. So it's kind of tit-for-tat across the board. Gretorp, I'm does not have uh, economic control is really what it comes down to at this stage of the match. His mains mined out, his natural expansions mined out, his 9 o'clock base is looking thin. He is going to be able to protect that with the, the Reaver, well, double Robo here. With the Reavers, the Cannons, maybe some Psystorm will be there. So he's got two bases. However, Hazley Nut has additional expansions, has map control. She can re-grab that bottom right-hand corner. Is starting to establish uh, that additional base. So she's basically at, soon should be at three bases, should have the economic control. But there's the flat macro is in Gretorp's favor. Both players have a sizable bank. And right now, it's just a problem for Hazley of just grouping up her army at the late game, which I do not fault her for. I have this uh, trouble for. She's a much better player than I am at this stage. And this is kind of the stage that I'm at as well. I just can't control armies late game. It's so hard. Uh, Corsair moving up. Level 1 weapons are right there. Looks like just some Dark Templar chilling with the Scourge and the Overlords. Gretorp, though, with a 200-200 army and oof. Slow walking his Reavers across. And with the current army composition of Hazley Nut, particularly in small numbers, this could be a lot of trouble. 
a defiler getting caught there. Maybe she just throws a lot, maybe a mutalisk switch. Potentially to take care of them. That's possible. She does have, well, now she doesn't have the gas. Might have had the gas to do it. Some zerglings running by looking for an engagement point. I'm wondering if she realizes that these reavers have slow walked all the way here. A good swarm might be able to make this happen. This is where plague could be a big support as well. And it looks like the lurkers are there. They're just going to try to slow walk. Into the 1 o'clock, perhaps 12 o'clock. Oh, a lot of lurkers there, but there's also an observer to spot them, and they do not range the reavers. Zergling's trying to engage from behind. The overlord's getting wiped out overhead. And yeah, they're wiping out all sorts of lurkers that just aren't even engaging. Some Hydalus trying to engage from the rear, but the Dragoons are providing support right there, and Hazley does not seem to have an answer for this army. 6 o'clock in the meantime, Gretorp is establishing... So basically, he's taking out the 11 o'clock for Hazley Nut. He's also establishing his own 5 o'clock base. And has some size storms it looks like to clear it up. So we're, ugh. so it looked like while, while Hazley had advantage at multiple points in this game. Starting to lose a grip on this match. The Reavers are pulling back to rebuild the Scarabs. As they softened up a lot. And they're going to re-engage reinforcements from Hazley Nut that are coming from the right. Gretarp still sitting at 200 supply. Keep in mind the splash damage works under that swarm. So... Still going to be able to just annihilate those lurkers to the north. The Dragoons need to be a little bit careful that they're not just walking in and getting wiped out there uh, to the northern field. Gretorp with a big, that big level 3 weapons. The Reavers just peeling out those lurkers. Hazley looking for a counterattack in the form of Zerglings or perhaps just on a missed rally point trying to end around. Hoping to perhaps get a pincer attack. Maybe get on top of these Reavers in the back corner. Unfortunately, there's the nice plague. Not catching a lot with it. Some zealots and dragoons and everything else trying to engage these zerglings so they don't have an opportunity to get on top of the reavers. They're successful in doing so. A single dragoon donating its life by just kind of walking forward into that. The reaver is still in position to kind of slow walk their way through. Both players having a moment of pause here. That base is going up in that bottom right-hand corner. I don't know that Hazley's aware of it. The reaver's continuing to slow walk into the upper left-hand corner. It still does not seem like... There's an army composition to deal with this. The Dragoon plaguing everything there. But it does not look like Hazley has enough of a defense force to stop the onslaught. And the Zerglings look like they're misrallied and walking right across this army. So Hazley going to end up losing her 11 o'clock. And actually might end up having this upper left hand base at threat. She's currently not... She, this is her only mining base, effectively, so she might end up getting starved out in the long term. The Reaver is having some trouble with uh, getting finding that Lurker before that swarm pushes out. But right now, she's at half the supply, less than half the supply, of Gretorp. So Gretorp weathering the storm and finding some room. She's looking for a counterattack, perhaps the natural expansion, but that's allowing Gretorp to go ahead and start marching to that upper left-hand base. Hazley, a little bit indecisive, trying to pull that army back, is exploring that bottom right-hand corner. Was maybe expecting to see an expansion there. But now the Dragoon... Oh, the Dragoon's going up. I do not believe Dark Swarm protects uh, buildings. So able to take out that Nidus Canal, which is going to cut off the reinforcement point. So the Reavers regathering. They're going to be able to slope push into this upper left-hand base. And they can just take their time because they have the high ground. Lurker is trying to get on top of these Dark Templar to open up something for Hazley Nut. But Gretorp, in the meantime, his mains mined out, his natural expansions mined out, 9 o'clock's mined out, the 10 o'clock's mined out. He's just mining at this bottom right-hand base. He's leaning up. So it's one base versus one base. Gretorp still with the 200 supply count. He's got a lot of minerals still in the bank, and he's got the Reavers moving around. I got to give this match to Gretorp at this stage. No Observer there, taking some free damage on the... Re oh, now there's the Observer in position. Eating a little bit of free damage. Maybe a Plague... And some additional action will happen. I don't think it's enough, unfortunately. Lurkers trying to peel forward. They're very quickly getting wiped out. Yeah, Hazley just doesn't have and doesn't have the resources to turn around, and get some mutilisks or something else to pick these reavers off at forward position. It just doesn't have the pull, the pure bulk in units. So she's starting to get starved out. The reavers slow walking into her last producing base in the upper left-hand corner. And it, I gotta say, it looks like Gretorp has done it. Looks like he has done it. Dragoons pushing in. Some Zerglings. I feel like this is kind of the last raw. Some Zerglings starting to re-engage from that upper angle. Going to the Zealots there. 
getting wiped out, the Dragoons getting wiped out as well. Some more Zealots and other Dark Templar, etc. Reinforcing kind of a cutoff point. Let's see if these Reavers just turn around and focus on that hatchery if they're going to try to engage these reinforcements. Oh, look at the number of the kill count here. 16, 15, 15, 19. Oof, those Reavers just absolutely incredible in this matchup. So game two goes to Gret Torp. I believe this is a best of... We got at least one more match is what I'm saying. We'll move on to game three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.